Hi guys, in this video we're going to start by looking at the properties of the group 1 metals. Moving on to the trends in the properties of the group 1 metals, the reactions of the group 1 metals with water, the reactions of the group 1 metals with chlorine and oxygen, and finishing off with a summary. If you've watched our video on the periodic table, you'll know that elements that lie in the same column or group of the periodic table tend to have similar properties. The elements in group 1 of the periodic table, found on the far left hand side, are collectively called the alkali metals. You'll most commonly hear about the first three, lithium, sodium and potassium. As we just said, because these elements are in the same group, they have similar properties to each other. They're all metals and they're all shiny and soft enough to be cut with a knife. The reason for their similar chemical properties is because they all have the same outer shell electronic structure. That is, they all have one electron in their outer shell. These diagrams indicate the outer shell electronic structure for sodium, which has the chemical symbol Na, potassium, which has the chemical symbol K, and rubidium, which has the chemical symbol of Rb. In each case, the dotted black lines show electron shells, and the outer shell electrons are shown in red. In this diagram, the electrons in the full inner electron shells are not indicated, but you can still see that sodium, potassium and rubidium all have one electron in their outer shell, and therefore that they are all group 1 metals. Generally, metals are found towards the left-hand side of the periodic table. Group 1 metals, specifically, have low densities, low melting points and low boiling points, especially when compared to other metals in the periodic table. Now we know what the group 1 metals are, we can start to think about some differences between them. In chemistry, we call rules or patterns that follow for a set of elements trends. For example, for the group 1 alkali metals, the reactivity of the elements increases as you travel down the group. And this is known as the trend in reactivity. What this means is if you write out the group 1 elements in the order that they appear in the periodic table, you know that the most reactive group 1 metal will be found at the bottom, as the reactivity increases as you travel from lithium to francium. Similarly, you know that cesium is slightly less reactive, rubidium slightly less reactive than cesium, and so on. And we can conclude that lithium is the least reactive group 1 metal. Just from knowledge of this trend and the order that the elements appear in the periodic table. So, how can we explain this? Well first, we should think about how group 1 metals tend to react. Which is that group 1 metals will react by losing their outermost electron. For example, on the left here, we have the electronic structure of the lithium atom, which we know is a lithium atom because it has three electrons and therefore three protons in the nucleus. This will react by losing this outermost electron in order to form the Li plus lithium cation. Because this neutral lithium atom has lost one electron, which itself has a negative charge, this lithium ion has a positive charge. Cation is just the name for an ion with a positive charge, as we'll see in a later video. So now we know that all group 1 metals react by losing their outer electron in exactly the same way as each other. So we can use this to think about why lithium might be the least reactive. Here we have the electron shells for lithium, potassium and rubidium, for which we can draw in our outer shell electron, as we know that each one will have one electron in its outer shell. From this we can see a clear difference which is the number of electron shells between the nucleus and the outermost electron which is lost in a reaction. We know that an electron has a negative charge whereas a nucleus has a positive charge and therefore that there is a strong electrostatic attraction between a nucleus and an electron. This attraction will be strongest in lithium where there's a very small distance between the nucleus and this electron and this attraction will get weaker moving to potassium to rubidium. This attraction between nucleus and electron will want to prevent the electron from leaving. So we can see that out of these three examples, in rubidium, this electron is the one that is most easily lost. And we can conclude that moving down the group, the outer electron will get further away from the nucleus. And as we said, this means it will be less attracted to the nucleus and therefore more easily lost. As this electron is what is lost in a chemical reaction, this explanation is why group 1 metals become more reactive as you travel down the group. Another trend that you'll need to know about for the group 1 metals is that their melting and boiling points decrease as you travel down the group. This means if you consider sodium, potassium and cesium, where sodium is the highest in the group, followed by potassium and followed by cesium, you would expect sodium to have the highest melting and boiling points 
and cesium to have the lowest melting and boiling points, with the values for potassium being somewhere intermediate. It turns out this is exactly what we see. If we consider melting points, sodium has the highest melting point of the three with a melting point of 98 degrees Celsius, cesium's is the lowest at 29 degrees Celsius, and potassium's is intermediate between the two values at 63 degrees Celsius. You can use this trend and the position of these elements within the group to predict that lithium will have an even higher melting point than sodium and that rubidium's melting points will be in between potassium and cesium's. The final trend we're going to talk about is that of density, which increases as you travel down the group. Density is defined as mass divided by volume. So what it means that density increases down the group is that the elements at the top of group 1 are lighter and the elements at the bottom of group 1 are heavier, with density increasing from the top to the bottom. We can now start to think about reactions of group 1 metals. To start with, group 1 metals will all react with water and the general expression for this reaction is group 1 metal plus water goes to react to form metal hydroxide plus hydrogen. The form of this reaction will be exactly the same for whichever group 1 metal. As an example, let's think about the reaction of lithium with water. So, on the left hand side, the reactant side of the equation, we have lithium, written here with its chemical symbol Li, plus water, reacting together in order to form the metal hydroxide, which in this case is lithium hydroxide, which has the chemical symbol LiOH, and hydrogen which exists as the hydrogen molecule H2. We can now balance this equation by thinking about the number of hydrogens on both sides. On the left hand side, the reactant side of the equation, we have two hydrogens in the form of water. But on the right hand side, we have three. One as part of OH in the lithium hydroxide and two together as a molecule of hydrogen. We therefore need to add more hydrogen on the reactant side of the equation which we can do by doubling the quantity of water added. However, if we do this, we can also see that we now have two oxygens on the reactant side and only one on the product side. So we need to add a two in front of the lithium hydroxide. And additionally, this doubles the number of lithiums on the product side. So the complete balanced equation also has a two in front of the initial lithium. If you check, you can now see that this reaction is balanced for all component elements. The final thing to do is to add state symbols. We know that water is a liquid and that hydrogen is a gas, so add liquid and gas state symbols to these two components. The alkali metals all have low melting and boiling points, but they are still solids at room temperature, so lithium is a solid. Lithium hydroxide is an ionic compound that will dissolve in water and it therefore has a state symbol of AQ to show that it is solid dissolved in solution. As we've seen in the previous video, the reactivity of the group 1 metals increases as we travel down the group. And we saw how this could be explained due to the distance of the furthest outermost electron from the nucleus. It's really easy to see this if you look at the reactions of the group 1 metals with water. If lithium is added to water, there will be a slight fizzing. And there's more violent fizzing when sodium is added to water, as sodium is more reactive. However, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium are all considerably more reactive, with the reaction between potassium and water producing enough heat to ignite the hydrogen that is produced. In this case, you see a characteristic purple flame which occurs when potassium burns. The reactions of the other group 1 metals with water all produce so much heat that they lead to explosions. In the equation above, we mentioned how lithium hydroxide would become an aqueous product. And all of the products of these reactions of the group 1 metals with water are alkaline solutions. The best way to see this is to use universal indicator. If universal indicator is added to water, it will go green to show that water is neutral. However, during the course of the reaction, and the addition of the group 1 metal can be seen to turn purple, indicating that the product is alkaline where the product is the solution of the group 1 metal hydroxide. We've just seen how all group 1 metals will react with water in exactly the same way to produce the alkaline metal hydroxide. Likewise, elements will all react with chlorine. 
This reaction can be summarised as alkali metal plus chlorine reacts together in order to give metal chloride. Let's consider lithium as an example again. So on the left hand side, the reactant side of the equation, we have lithium metal, which is reacting with chlorine gas, which we know is a diatomic molecule, so that means there's two chlorines together in a molecule. Um, and we also know that chlorine is a gas, reacting together in order to form a metal chloride. In this case, lithium chloride, LiCl, which is a solid. Now we just need to balance this equation by noticing that we've got two atoms of chlorine on the left hand side of the equation and only one on this side. So let's add a 2 in front of lithium chloride. And then if we add a 2 in front of the lithium metal on this side, we can see that this reaction is balanced. This is the basic form of the equation and it holds for any of the group 1 metals. All you need to do is just exchange the alkali metal on this side for your alkali metal of choice and exchange it here within the metal chloride. For example, Na plus Cl2 will react together to give NaCl, and the balancing is exactly the same, except that the product here is sodium chloride. We can also add exactly the same state symbols, solid, chlorine gas, and a solid salt product. In exactly the same way as in the reactions of the group 1 metals with water, the reactivity of the group 1 metals increases as you travel down the group meaning that sodium will be more reactive than lithium in a reaction with chlorine. A slightly more tricky example is that the reactions between group 1 metals and oxygen. In this instance, group 1 elements react with oxygen, but they all give different metal oxides, and it's something you'll just have to have an idea of and learn the specific examples for the exam. For example, lithium reacts with oxygen in order to produce Li2O. Li2O is a solid which is known as lithium oxide. The full equation is given here so you can see how to balance it. Sodium can also react with oxygen in exactly the same way to give Na2O or sodium oxide. These are both ionic salts containing the O2- ion. However, a smaller amount of sodium may react with oxygen in order to produce Na2O2 which is what is known as sodium peroxide. You can see that the difference here is in the amount of sodium in the reactant side of the equation. Here you have four atoms of sodium, and here you only have two atoms of sodium. Four atoms of sodium forms a sodium oxide, and two forms sodium peroxide. Similarly, you can form a peroxide with potassium, and K2O2 is potassium peroxide. There's one final product with oxygen that you'll need to know, and this is what happens when you react one atom of potassium with oxygen which is to form KO2. This has the name potassium superoxide. All of the products of the reactions of the group 1 metals with oxygen are solids. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing GCSE chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the stat revised smiley face and together let's make GCSE chemistry a walk in the park.